Aloha, good afternoon, everybody, from the heart of the valley here in Orem, Utah. Welcome back to UCCU Ballpark on the campus of Utah Valley University and game two of the 6A championship series between the Quarter Canyon Chargers and the Lehigh Pioneers. Joining you live for the broadcast booth here at UCCU Ballpark, Alexander Tumup alongside Ty Wilkinson here. Alrighty, Ty. This is it. Corner Canyon took their first, has lost now their two of the last three games. Their backs are against the wall today after getting run ruled against Lehigh. You know Jeff, yours team is going to come out swinging here to start this game. And very well, that will be the case, Alex, because especially if you're Corner Canyon, a team that has at least two 10-run games in the tournament, you know this offense is due for an explosion. We obviously didn't see it yesterday. You can only wonder and kind of think to yourself that maybe today is the day that Corner Canyon starts to wake up on the offensive perspective, you know, try to get those runs on the board that they were unable to attain last night. And TJ Peterson on the mound today for Lehigh, which makes it all the more interesting because as we saw, Lehigh had their number one going yesterday, Corner Canyon had their number one go yesterday, but Lehigh just unleashed a barrage in that third inning, eight runs on seven base hits, it <laughs> all capped off by that two-run home run by Dawson Brown. Right, it was, it was an impressive showing, I would say, by Lehigh's offense, especially in a championship round where you have a lot to prove if you're Lehigh. Once again, we keep mentioning first year in 6A coming off of you know, originally in 5A, but you want to have that statement and say, hey, we're going to be around for a while. We all, we've all we already been to a couple of championships. We beat Corner Canyon in basketball already, so it's like, well, since we're going to be here, why not put on a show? And, you know, Lehigh definitely did show out. And Ty, that's what I want to get to next with you. Talking about the keys to this game, rather, I mean, it's not really a hide and associates keys to the game, but it's more like a talking points, I guess, what to watch for today is what... As, I'm interested to see how Corner Canyon comes out offensively because again, they get they're the lower seed, so they get the top they get the top innings in every game so far. Except of course if we get to a game three, that it'll be a coin flip. But it'd be very interesting to see how Corner Canyon comes out and how aggressive they are against TJ Peterson, who's the number two for Lehigh, not the number one that they were facing last night, Brain Hansen. Well, we've seen it happen before, as I mentioned. You this is a team that's known for their scoring efforts in that Corner Canyon offense. And the biggest thing and the biggest note that I have for them today is they need to wait to get high into the count. As I mentioned, waiting for your pitches, waiting for something good is the key to the game, especially when you're facing the number two for Lehigh. Once you wait for your pitches, you find something good, you'll filter through a couple and that's okay. You need to have really good eyes. And if you're a corner canyon, you need to also be really smart on the base path. As you know, you got Maze Madsen over there at shortstop and he can if he works with his number two pitcher, they they can be a very, a, a very, very dangerous duo. And talking about that now for Lehigh, for Mays Matson and Co. today, for head coach Eric Matson to win a champ, to their seven innings away from winning a championship here, maybe less on their on his field where he used to play. He told the Deseret News the other day. He was talking with them and he said that we haven't won anything yet and that we need to stay focused. What do the pioneers need to do in order to take care of business here today? You gotta stay content, you gotta put some runs on the board like you did yesterday, and you gotta, I guess, keep yourself locked in. You have to stay contained, get the bats going early, because Lehigh, as we know, they are a comeback team, as we've seen in the past previous games against, once again, Riverton and American Fork, where they come back really late, but, I think the key against Corner Canyon is you got to go ahead at least a little bit early because Corner Canyon is known for going ahead in the early going, as we've seen in their previous outgoing. So if you're Lehigh, you want to keep that the foot on the gas, you want to keep going. And in the offensive perspective, you really just have to get those bats going. Will there be a game three? Or will the Lehigh Pioneers claim a 6A championship and cap off a historic first year in the top division of high school sports? We are ready to go. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and we'll have first pitch. This is it, folks. The Corner Canyon Chargers and the Lehigh Pioneers ready to decide it in the 6A championship series. Game two begins when we return. All right, everyone, welcome back. All right, everyone, welcome back here to the UCCU ballpark on the campus of Utah Valley University here in Orem, Utah. It's time to look at who the two coaches have put out on the field, the Corner Canyon Chargers, led, of course, by Jeff Yore. Time to see who he's put together as his winning team today on the diamond, just like how Heidemann and Associates is putting together a winning team for you, the client, for whatever you need in your life. 
All right, the quarter caddy chargers go as follows. Garrett Downing leads off at center field. He'll be followed by Ryder Florence. The shortstop, Cash Cocker, the second base, but we'll bat third. Nathan Horseman will bat clean up today at third base. Andrew Nice, the starting pitcher, will bat fifth in the order today. He'll be followed by first baseman Ryland Dunn. Jack Munson will bat uh, seventh in the order. He's in right field. Drew Watcott moves up from ninth to eighth in the order. He'll bat in left, bat coming from left field. And Tanner Mackey, the designated hitter, actually inserts back into the lineup. He has not been in the starting lineup for the past three games. And they will all go up against the course. The starter for Lehigh, Ty, TJ Peterson, on the mound today. And Ty, we talked about how early on the, you know, the number one for Lehigh, Braden Hansen gave up that early, early base hit and then came around to score on the sack fly. And you know that in the back of Eric Madsen's mind, that quick strike ability is very dangerous to his team. I would completely agree. A veteran head coach, he knows exactly where his team needs to be in this situation because, well, not only has he been in the moment countless times, it feels like, but I feel like he knows exactly what his players need. And, you know, having that accountability for your players really just shows how Lehigh's season has just been so productive all year long. Garrett down in the leadoff man stands in. Ball one, and we're off and running here in game two of the 6A championship series. Next pitch on the way is hit on a line to Ozzie Williams. And he doesn't have to punch. Makes the glove down and there's one out here on just two pitches. Game time temperature here this afternoon is 52 degrees. It's overcast, but the sun is starting to come out. But it is a very humid afternoon. 71% humidity. And we went over by a couple of hours because of a couple of rain delays in the last game. The first delay was for rain at about 11.45. We were in a delay for about an hour and 30 minutes, and then there was a hail delay for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes for the safety reasons of the players, as this one is poured in at the letters for a strike to the shortstop, Ryder Florence. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. That one is in the dirt, two balls and a strike. Still a pretty good crowd on hand though here at UCC Ballpark. Again, mostly Lehigh Purple in the crowd today as this one is in the dirt for ball three. Three one on the way. This one is hit in the air to right. We're tailing down toward the line and that's gonna land foul near the bullpen out there in right field. So the count goes to full here. Three balls and two strikes on the second man in the order, Ryder Florence. And this is not the scenario where you would want to lose Ryder Florence either just because, you know, 3-2 counts are for TJ Peterson, usually his specialty. Left that one up high, ball four, and so Florence reaches on a walk. Now hitting number five, Cash Conker. And here comes Cash Conker now, the second baseman. Lathan Horseman stands on deck. As there's a runner on first here with one out. Check throw to first. That gets by the first baseman, Tanner Heaps. And now Florence is going to third. He's going to slide on in there. That'll be an error on the pitcher, TJ Peterson. And just like yesterday, Ty, already a runner at third here with just one out here for Corner Canyon. Yep, this is the position position you would want to be in. We saw it last game, Corner Canyon, they went up early, but they only got one run. So if you're Corner Canyon, you're looking to get a little bit more base runners and a little bit more of that that pad, especially considering you can go up big here in the first. That first pitch is down in the dirt to conquer one ball, no strikes. We mentioned pregame that this team is known for striking early, this Corner Canyon offense. Next pitch on the way is high and inside for ball two. Runner at third here, one out at a 2-0 count on the second baseman, Cash Conker, as the Chargers look to strike early again for the third for the second consecutive game as that one is high and inside on Conker, and the count goes to three balls and no strikes. And Eric Madsen very quickly out of the dugout here, and he's going to have a chat with his pitcher. Be 
we kept touching on this tie yesterday is that the the adrenaline and the nerves here in this environment we, we talked about how they might be flowing a little bit too strongly sometimes I think right now if you're TJ Peterson definitely that's the case I would completely agree you get a little bit of ahead of yourself too I mean adding the fact though I mean this is a clinching opportunity for Lehigh in a championship game the nerves are definitely at the all-time high especially for the pitcher more than it feels like any other base player in the defense just because you have that accountability to your name and to try to get through this order as soon as humanly possible. Taking all the way, he pitches in there for a strike. Three balls and one now on the third man in the order, Cash Conquer. Again, Nathan Horseman stands on deck. And there's still only one out here in the top of the first inning. That pitch is inside for ball four. And there are runners at the corners here with one out. Here comes Horseman to the plate now. First pitch on the way to Horseman. Is down in the dirt for ball one. Umpires today, Tracy Polson's behind the plate calling balls and strikes. Matt Barker's over at first base. He'll be covering from first base up to, from the right field line up to second base. And the crew chief, Jason Estridge, is at third base. He'll be coming from third base, or from the left field line rather, up to second base. As this one is up high, two balls and no strikes. You talk about the toughness for a pitcher too and the conditions that he's been dealt for his hand today. He's just trying to find anywhere with, at least within the zone where he can pitch to, at least for this case, for Nathan Horseman. And Alex, as a pitcher, that's really difficult to do, especially just with the rainy conditions that it's been this past however long it feels like. Yeah, it was raining since we got here this morning, about maybe six or seven hours of just constant rain, and it finally cleared up this afternoon as this goes to two balls and two strikes now. On the cleanup man, Nathan Horseman. Andrew Nice stands on deck as the Corner Canyon Chargers look to break the seal for the second consecutive day. They got runners at the corners here with still one out. 2 2 pitch on the way for Peterson. This one is hit in the air to right, going down toward the line. Brown will make the catch. They're going to send the runner home. This is going to be a close play, but it's cut off up the line. And once again, Corner Canyon has the lead for the first time in this game. It's 1-0. So just like yesterday, Ty, off the ice sack fly for the Corner Canyon Chargers. And now here comes Andrew Nice with still a runner in scoring position and two out. Yeah, that's the situation you want to be in if you're Corner Canyon. I mean, you can't do it much better than Nathan Horseman. Of course, you'd obviously like the ball to drop out there in right field, but... A sack fly will do it, and on top of that, now Cash Conquer advances over there to second. First pitch on the way is hit up the middle. That is stopped by Williams. Throw to first in time. What a play! The stab of the strike from the second baseman, and that retires the side. We go down to the bottom of the first inning after Corner Canyon strikes first. 1-0 our score. We'll be back with the bottom of the first. Welcome back, everyone, to UCCU Ballpark here in the heart of the Valley in Orem, Utah. Time to see who Eric Madsen's put together as his winning team on the diamond today. Presented by the full-service law firm that's committed to winning for you, the client. Item and Associates. Ozzie Williams just made that amazing 4-3 put out over at second base. He'll bat lead off today. Mays Madsen right behind him in the two-hole at shortstop. Boston Dracula at your left field will bat third. Cole Ybarra. The designated hitter will bat cleanup. Brandon Manukin, the catcher, fifth. Cooper Williams at third place will bat sixth. Dawson Brown, who had the two-run home run last night in right field, he'll bat seventh. Tanner Heaps will bat eighth. Gavin Yates will bat ninth, rounding out the order. And they will all face the left-hander, Andrew Nice, for the Corner Canyon Chargers tie. And now, if you're the Chargers, you had this situation yesterday. You were up 1-0, but Jacob Trost able to get out of a jam early on, but then everything kind of unraveled. How much of a key is it for Andrew Nice to get a clean inning rather than have some traffic here in the first inning? I'm going to use a little bit of 
play on words here. Andrew Nice needs to be not nice to the batters that he has to deal with he today. He needs to be a little naughty, if you know what I mean. Yeah, quite. He has to, <laughs> he has to that deal with That might not be the right expression. But... Yeah. He, he just needs to not get ahead of himself. He cannot allow certain base runners for a team that has just been so good on that first and second baseline. We saw it against Riverton. And I mean, once again, if they, whenever they get into a scoring situation, it feels like every time that they're capable of capitalizing. So Andrew Nice, if you can get a 1-2-3 inning here, not only will that be a big situation when you're facing it's Ozzy Williams, Mays Madsen, and Boston Dracula in order, but now you got to get those bats going again since you're already up 1-0. to zero. And it's lefty on lefty here for the first two batters. Andrew Nice faces the second baseman, Ozzy Williams. And already we have some head games here going between the two players. First pitch on the way is picked up off the rug there by the catcher Cotter on ball one. one -oh pitch. Ground ball to the left side. Good stop by Horseman. He turns and throws and he gets it. What a play. So after Williams had the great play, Horseman comes back with one of his own, and there's one gone. That's the second amazing infield play that we've seen. It's a, only the first inning right now, Alex. And that turf, that's difficult to read too, especially considering the rain that we've got in the past seven hours. First pitch now on the way to Mays Madsen is in on the inner half for a strike. Again, lefty against lefty for the first two batters of this game faced for Andrew Nice. As the time is called here by Matson. Oh, one pitch. That one is in the carpet, gets away from the catcher Cotter all there, so ball one. Matson in this tournament overall six for twelve. Including last night with that two run triple. Well, one on the way. This one is hit down the left field line and tailing into the grass, outcropping down that side. One ball, two strikes. Okay, this is the situation, by the way, where you want to be in if you're Andrew Nice. You get ahead of the count against Mays Madsen. You want to try to deal him something a little bit on the left, on the opposite side of Madsen. This one is hit in the air to center field. Coming in is Downing onto the head of that Looks like more of the eyebrow, the right eyebrow of that Wolverine logo in center field. Makes the catch, and quickly there is two gone. Good start here for Andrew Nice. Gets the 5-3 put out by Nathan Horseman over a third, and then gets the fly out to Garrett Downing, and now he's one out away from getting a clean inning here for the Corner Canyon Chargers, something that they are definitely looking for after causing a lot of havoc on the base paths yesterday in Lehigh Piders as this one is poured in right up the knees for a strike. Well, this is what we talked about before the start of the inning, Alex, is Corner Canyon really needs to come out with a really good clean inning here because that 1-2-3 can be so, so dangerous for Lehigh, including when you get down to the depths of the lineup. This one is roasted in the air to center field. Downing is there, and that is the end of the inning. So Andrew Nice does his job in the bottom of the first inning. Unlike last night, it's a 1-2-3 start for the Corner Canyon Chargers defensively. And now they come to the plate with a 1-0 lead in the top of the second. T.J. Peterson back on the mound here to start the top half of the second inning. For the Lehigh Pioneers here, 1-0 our score. As we head to the top half of the second inning here, Ty, that was a big 1-2-3 inning there for Andrew Nice after Jacob Trost got himself into a little bit of trouble last night. And now with the 1-0 lead, the Corner Canyon Chargers got to build a little momentum here against the Slee High defense. Well, as we said, their first and second innings, they are known for scoring. That has been the story of Corner Canyon this tournament because they have just done so, so well of working pitchers high into the count, which then forces the bullpen to once again come along. And then by that point, as you can obviously tell, it just becomes a mind game scenario for the pitchers facing against the batters. 
Six, seven, eight in the order here in the top of the second inning for the Corner Canyon Chargers, starting with the D for the first baseman, Ryland Dunn, and he takes a strike on the inner half. A one pitch. This one is hit in the air well to deep left field. Going back to the wall. That ball is gone. A solo home run for Ryland Dunn of the Chargers. As expected, come out and they need business in game two. How about that, Alex? His second of the tournament. And his first one here in the championship series, and it could not have come at a better time for the Corner Canyon Chargers as this is ball one up high to the right fielder Jack Munson now. Next pitch is inside high, two balls and no strikes. How about that start? for Corner Canyon, exactly tied what we talked about. Get the sack fly, and now they get the big home run from Ryland Dunn. As I want to set the knees for a strike. I'm pretty confident he put it in the same place he did over at Larry H. Miller Field, over in right. That ball had a ton of carry, though. I mean, that thing was absolutely smoked out to left field. Wasn't sure if that had enough carry on it. Looked like the left fielder had a beat on it, but it did have enough thanks to the wind pushing it out towards left field as this one is fouled. Look out! That one came really close to our broadcast booth, but that means it's time for an Any Hour Services random roof ringer on cue, which happens anytime a ball hits the roof or the tarp at Larry H. Miller Field. This is his ball four to Munson. And a runner on first with nobody out here in the top of the second following the home run by Dunn. All right, Ty, take it away. All right, take a guess, Alex. How many perfect games have ever been pitched in MLB history? You really have to ask me that question. I know that number. It's 24. Oh, well, there you go. Because you get, you get I saw you, the 24th you, one last year. I figured I would give you a softball for this one, Alex. I know we're playing oh, baseball. Thanks. I figured I'd just give you a nice, easy, easy little layup. That's what you get. Yeah, exactly. That's what I get. That's what you get for trying to... I, 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 the I was going to say, the bus yesterday with that Patrick Mahomes I, st I stumped you rigger. with that one. You, you, better, you better admit to that. <laughs> I did admit to that. I have been admitting to it. What are you talking about? This one has been the dirt ball one following the check throw to first. Runner on first, and nobody out here in the top half of the second inning. Chargers lead 2 0 on the sack fly RBI, and then the home run by Ryland Dunn to left field. 1-0 pitch. Tried to lay the bunt down, but ended up missing it. Strike one. You got to think if you're Corner Canyon, too, you're really in the best-case scenario that you want to be in right now. Up two on the Lehigh Pioneers, and you've already doubled the amount of runs that you had in the previous game. 1-1 one, one pitch on the corner. Strike two. Good pitch there and a good placement there from Peterson. Now 1-2 the count. As Peterson looks to work around that solo home run by Ryland Dunn, which again, Ryland Dunn, his second of this 6-8 tournament. He had a, a two-run home run of the second inning against Fremont back on Tuesday in the second round. What two pitch, and now we have time call. Tanner Mackey, the DH, stands on deck. He'll be followed by the center fielder, Garrett Downing. Check throw back to first, close play, but back in safely is the runner Munson. A lot of head games really that TJ Peterson has to deal with on the mound right now. Can feel the intensity going up already. Here's the one, two. Goodbye. Got him looking at a pitch on the corner. Boy, that was some sauce served up there by TJ Peterson, and there's one gone. His first strikeout of the day. Went bottom corner on the righty. That's what I keep saying, Alex. This is where the hitters, that's where their weakness is. If you go opposite side, I mean, it's really difficult for them to read, especially in the strike zone. And he catches them looking. And Ty, talk about that for a second. I mean, you played enough baseball 
I mean, you, Wilson, and Josh Dodge here in the booth with me have played all baseball, for, mm -hmm. played baseball for a long time. Why is it so hard to read a pitch going to the opposite corner if you're a right-handed hitter? You know, because when it comes across, it's like in a diagonal form. This one gets away from the first baseman, Williams. That's going to allow the runner advance to second. Another errant check throw in the second one of the day already for TJ Peterson. But uh, back to what you were saying. It, when it's a diagonal form, Alex, you can kind of see it feels like the ball is going to continue to carry to your opposite angle from the batter's perspective. So when it keeps going to that opposite angle, again, it kind of is really difficult to justify. In the left center field, Yates comes over and makes the catch, and there's two gone now as they will not tag and advance the runner. Two nothing corner Canyon, two runs on just one base hit. The first run of the game came on a walk and then came on a sack fly, so it goes down as an earned run. And then start off this inning, the leadoff home run by Ryland Dunn that cleared the, the wall in left field by a good seven or eight close to 10 feet. I mean, that thing was crushed. Second one we've seen in this tournament. There's another beauty right on the hands there for a strike from TJ Peterson. Just again trying to work around that solo home run by Ryland Dunn. 0-1 pitch. Same spot, but just uh, misses the black inside. That's a tough one. Maybe caught just a fraction too much of the, the, a fraction too much of the dirt. One one pitch, and this time that one plunks him on the foot. And so, runners on first and second now with two out for the Corner Canyon Chargers. Munson at, at second, and Tanner Mackey now at first, and now back to the top of the order. Or excuse me, that's Garrett Downing over first. I'm sorry. And then Ryder Florence now comes up to bat. He the score of the only run here besides the home run by Ryland Dunn. That one misses the outside corner ball one. Back to what I was saying, Alex, about throwing pitches on the opposite end. Because if you do inevitably get a hold of it and you start chasing it, you don't get as much power off the edge of the bat as you would normally want to. And plus, it also goes opposite field and you can also, you know end up popping out or flying out in either scenario. And batters really want to lay off that pitch. That's why it makes it so difficult. On one on the way. There's another beauty strike too. So the Chargers down to their last strike here of their inning here in the second. Only run came across the score on the Ryland Dunn solo home run. Sixth man in the order to bat here in this inning. One two pitch. This one misses and bounces up off the rubber. Two and two now. Deuces wild here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs for Ryder Florence, the shortstop. Here it is. And this one is in the dirt. And the count goes full. This is already a second full count offering that he's faced. He's already had a walk. Here it is. Runners go. And that one misses ball four. And so the bases are loaded here for Corner Canyon. With two out now, and here comes the second baseman, Cash Conker. And we have movement in the bullpen for the Lehigh Pioneers right-hander is up in the bullpen. That's Carson College up in the bullpen, number 10, 6'5 senior. Who is up there right now trying to help out TJ Peterson. But Ty, getting back to what we were saying about Corner Canyon coming out like this, this is exactly the kind of start you expected. And in fact, we both expected from Corner Canyon in this game. You could have felt it, I, I feel like, coming in early because you want to work TJ Peterson, the number two on Lehigh really deep into the count. We saw Ryder Florence both on 3-2 pitches. He both took walks, and if you're Corner Canyon, those are hard pitches to lay off to that Ryder Florence was dealt. But now this puts you in a really good situation as you're already up two with the bases loaded. Oh, and that one hits Conker in the low part of the foot. 
That will bring home a run. And it's 3-0 Corner Canyon. What a start. We were talking about it earlier. That ball placement for pitchers is so difficult after a rain. And Mays Matson, the captain, going over to have a chat with TJ Peterson. As you get a look at the situation there, shown by Vince Francis, our cameraman. Nowhere to put Nathan Horseman. He's surrounded here is TJ Peterson. And now Eric Matson pops on right out of the dugout. And if you're Jeff Yore for Corner Canyon, Ty, you could not have scripted at any better start than this right now. To say the least, I mean, up 3-0, you're already in the second inning. You've already done twice as good, if not better, than the first previous game that you've faced. But you're also, we're facing the number one pitcher for Lehigh. And now already you're going to start working the bullpen already just in the second inning. You're right, Ty. We have a pitching change here. T.J. Peterson is chased after just one and two-thirds innings. Carson College now. It's up to him to get something done. Quarter Canyon coming out firing here in game two. Looking to send this to a third game. Welcome back, everyone, to the Rewind Sports Network's coverage of the UHSAA 6A Baseball Championship Series. The 5A title's already been decided. Maple Mountain upsetting the number one seed Brighton in a stunning two-game sweep here earlier this afternoon. And now Corner Canyon knocking on the door of potentially breaking this one open and sending this 6A series to a game three. Carson College now on the mound as we bring you back here inside UCCU Ballpark. Of course, gave some shout-outs yesterday to some of the people from Lehigh that I knew very well. Of course, Corner Canyon guard Wells Robertson, of course, watching from wherever he's watching from today. Hope he's enjoying the proceeding so far. And I'm sure Ty Wells isn't the only one that's happy right now. I'm sure Jeff Yore is loving every minute of this start by his team. Well, <laughs> They've already chased TJ Peterson, and now you're forcing Lehigh to burn their bullpen here. Just one and two-thirds innings into this game. I was going to say, you think he's happy, but it's not over yet, Alex. They're still knocking on the doors of opportunity. Yes. Base is loaded two outs. Yes. You think he's happy, the but he's still going to be locked in. Yes. College's first pitch is in the dirt. That gets by, and the runners will not advance. Eric Dowdick thought about it, but thought much better of it. Again, a lot of the 5,000 here at UCCU Ballpark or close to 5,000 are wearing Lehigh purple, but still a good contingent of neutrals and Corner Canyon fans here. As it's really clearing up now here in South Utah County with the weather as unstable as it is with all the rain we've had this morning you really now get concerned of the threat of thunderstorms here as we head towards the early dusk early evening hours one oh pitch down low again two and oh You wonder the approach that Corner Canyon's going to take now with the bullpen pitcher. As I mentioned before, the key to the game is to work within the counts. And I mean, great job by Nathan Horseman already. This one is ripped foul toward the dugout. Heads up over there for Jeff Yore. Already two runs home in this inning. One came home on the HBP, and then another one was on the solo home run to lead off the inning by Ryland Dunn. That cleared the... Left field flint fence over there on the UCCU logo by plenty. 2-1 pitch. Strike two, even though Manukin dropped it. And a big pitch here for Carson College as he tries to limit the damage. 3-0 corner canyon. Trying to force a decisive game three in the 6A championship series. The 2-2 pitch. Lighter into center field. That is a base hit. One run will score. Florence is going to be sent to the plate. The throw is cut off. And Corner Canyon unleashing here in the first two innings. You expected it. We expected it. 
and we're getting it. What a start for Corner Canyon this afternoon. First pitch on the way to Andrew Dice is hit at the knees for a strike. Four runs have come across to score on two base hits here in this inning. The solo homer by Ryland Dunn and the two-run single by Nathan Horstman. 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Well, did I say the name of the game is going to have to be to work within the count? How about that? A single on a 2-2 pitch. And he loved that four-seamer right down the middle. And he took it straight to dead center and scored two. That was a beautiful at-bat. 0-2 pitch. Good waste there down in the dirt. Andrew Nice represents the ninth batter in the order to hit in this inning. Chargers have batted around here. That one is down to the dirt. Two balls and two strikes now. Deuce is wild again. I think the even crazier stat is they only have two hits. But all that matters is that score right to the next of it. Five runs. 2-2 two -two pitch. And the count once again goes full. Manuka drops the ball. Throw down a third. He is safe. As Conker slides in ahead of the throw as Williams could not keep the tag on over at third. And the count goes full now and there are runners at the corners now with still two out. That is risky. 3-2. That runner goes. He is hit. And... The bases will be loaded again as false start on the runners. Horseman thought it was a pass ball, but it hit the it hit the batter before it skittered through the legs of Manukin. So everybody goes back a bag. And, and the tenth man <laughs> in the order to come to the plate now in this inning is the man who had the two-run home run, or rather the two-run home run on Tuesday and the solo home run. Just a little bit ago, and Ryland Dunn and Eric Matson again out of the dugout. Meanwhile, we do have another person warming up in the bullpen for the Lehigh Pioneers. And College is going to have the ball taken from him after just six batters. Another bullpen reliever coming. Corner Canyon. Make it an all click here in game two. They lead five to nothing and threatening to add more. Welcome back everyone. Earlier we had our any hour services random roof ringer. I'd like to thank them for our sponsorship, for their sponsorship of KSL Sports Rewind's coverage of high school sports all school year long. Five to nothing here in the top half of inning number two. The bags are still full here for Corner Canyon and now tie after six batters. Trey Pavelka, another senior, going to be on the mound here for the Lehigh Pioneers. And you were just telling me about the crooked numbers both these teams have put up. I mean, it was Corner Canyon who put up crooked numbers against Davis and Fremont on back-to-back -back days. They put up a crooked number against Mountain Ridge. And here they are against Lehigh. You expected they were going to come out firing. And this is exactly what you expected. Uh, this is quite exactly what I expected, Alex. We watched this game. It was Corner Canyon versus Mountain Ridge on the 23rd of May. And we saw the first inning, they put up a seven spot on Mount Ridge early. And of course, you know how that game ended out turning out. But still, this is the place where Corner Canyon is known in these early goings. Pavelka's first pitch is in at the knees for a strike as Eric Batson just trying to get really the tourniquet on this landslide here in the second inning and get to the bottom half and give his offense a chance. 0-1 pitch from Pavelka as he has a look back at second. This one is foul right back to the screen. And for what seems like the sixth or seventh time in this inning, Corner Canyon is in an 0-2, is at a two-strike hole again. Can Pavelka finally put an end to it? Yes!
Ray Pavelka, first batter he faces, strikes him out on just three pitches. But the Corner Canyon Chargers have come to play in game number two. We'll be back with the bottom of the second after this word from Igloo. Well, there's your story of the game so far, folks, through one and a half innings here at UCCU Ballpark. Five to nothing is our score. Alexander Tumup alongside Ty Wilkinson. Ty, just five runs on two hits, as it says on the scoreboard there for the Corner Candy Chargers. But what matters now is, is what you talked about at the top of the broadcast was that Corner Canyon has to be more patient, more patient than they were last night. Now they have a 5 nothing lead, and they've retired the first three batters they faced. Right. I keep, I keep emphasizing it because it's such a big deal is to wait for your pitches, and what an at-bat that was by Horseman. Goes 2-2, and that was a single right down the middle, it felt like, into center field, and that, I feel like, is what makes this lead as large as it is and makes that such a really good situation now for Corner Canyon. So now, Ty, it's 5 to nothing Chargers here. We know Lehigh is capable of coming back. We know they're capable of putting up big innings. What do they need to do right now besides waiting for their pitches in order to get something going against Andrew Nice? you got to try to, I would say, well, yes, you obviously have to wait for your pitches, but what you have to do right now is you have to be have really, really smart and contentious on the base paths more than anything because this Corner Canyon team, we've seen it a couple of times, at least in this tournament, that pickoff attempts that they keep getting is super, super dangerous and it's deadly to teams. We obviously haven't seen, you know, Lehigh face up against Corner Canyon in this situation before, but that is going to be the name of the game is the base path scenario for Lehigh. Three balls and a strike here to the leadoff man in the inning, Cole Yabara, the DH, will be found out by Brandon Manukin and Car uh, Cooper Williams, the third baseman. 3-1 pitch. Hit towards second. Picked up on a couple of hops, winged over to first. And the first four have been retired here in this inning. Now we, number 15. Or this game, rather, by Andrew Nice. As now the catcher, Brandon Manukin, now comes up to the plate. And, of course, as usual, he'll be followed by Cooper Williams on deck. Well, he's got the nickname, Big Nuke. Yeah, kind of a good reason for that, too. Kind of a good reason for it. He is definitely a power hitter, that's for sure. Manukin, of course, the RBI uh, single that tied the game on Tuesday night against American Fork. And he takes strike one. Oh, one pitch is another strike. And Nice is just rolling right now. Here through one and a third innings. O2 pitch. This is lined to short. And Florence is able to trap it. Throw to first in time. What a play. So Florence not able to trap the lot, traps the liner over there and is able to throw out Manukin over at first base. 6-3 score the put out. And that makes five in a row retired to begin the game here for Andrew Nice. Well, how about Andrew Nice's defense right now? Ground out, followed by a fly out, fly out, fly out. And then, as we saw that ground out, this defense for Corner Canyon is making the score that it is right now going through these orders. First pitch to Cooper Williams is a swinging strike. And this is going to be Andrew Nice's biggest test, I think, Alex, is because Lehigh is known for their depth and their lineups. They can strike at any point at any given time. So it's a matter of if he can contend these pitches and you know try to not give them anything that they can try to put into play. One more pitch on the way is lined down the right-hand side and foul over the first base coach. You just talk about depth on all cylinders, Alex. This team is loaded. I mean, this loaded. team is, is loaded for bear, I mean, but right now, like I said, can't script a better start than this if you're Corner Canyon. One, two, payoff on the way. Swing and a miss, drop third strike, throw down a first. And six up, six down for Andrew Nice here in this game. He needed to come out strong, and so did his offense, and they are doing it right now. We head to the top of the third as Lehigh goes Ekahi Elua Aloha in the bottom of the second inning, and they trail now 5-0 here in game two. 
Beautiful look there at the Wasatch Front. Welcome back to the heart of the valley here in Orem, Utah. Alexander Tumup alongside my broadcast partner, Ty Wilkinson. Five to nothing, Quarter Canyon leads here in game, th game two of this 6A championship series. Lehigh leads the best of three, one game to none. As Jack Munson, 7 8 9 in the order after a 10 batter inning that saw four runs come across to score on just two base hits, including the solo home run by Ryland Dunn. And the two-run single by the cleanup hitter Nathan Horstman. And now Jack Munson stands in as Trey Pavelka continues to work at the first pitch that Munson faces is in the dirt for ball one. Well, how about Corner Canyon already forcing Lehigh to go to their third option just into now the top of the third inning? Next pitch on the way is a crisp fastball on the outer half for a strike. I think that's a good sign that your offense is doing something to make uh, Eric Madsen make three separate pitching changes. Pitch on the way is line foul off to the left over the concourse and out of play. Cal goes to one ball and two strikes now as the Lehigh bullpen trying to hold it in here against Corner Canyon and keep this deficit as manageable as possible. One two pitch and a good waste there outside high 2-2. Two, two. It's warming up now here in Orem, 55 degrees, but the humidity is still high at 66%. That pitch is hit in the air to left, tailing down towards the bullpen and is going to land in the fans over there as some kids go in there to make the sliding grab. Seats a box sliding too on the hills up there over on the left-hand side of left field where the grass outcropping is. Maple Mountain took some uh, liberties to do a little hill slide here at U-View as well. As this count goes to full now, three balls and two strikes on Jack Munson, the leadoff man of the inning for the Chargers. Full count offering. And another foul. This is going to be the seventh pitch of the A-B coming up here for the leadoff man of the inning, Jack Munson, as they are really making this Lehigh pitching staff work, which is something that Ty, you and I talked about ad nauseum at the beginning of this game. Was, this is another foul ball. That's making eight now coming up here for Trey Pavelka. Well, Alex, I should have touched on this earlier, but like you have to think maybe that is the strategy by Eric Madsen to take out your pitchers a little bit early because if Corner Canyon forces another game, it's going to have to come down to a pitching situation where you're going to need pitchers. So maybe I guess it makes sense if you're Eric Madsen, to only limit the amount of pitch count that your pitchers are getting because if Corner Canyon forces another game, we're going to a game three. Well, Pavelka wins the battle there with That's Jack Munson striking him out on the ninth pitch of the AB. That's got to give him a little bit of confidence there on the mound, you would think, as this is chopped to third and foul. It stayed fair for about maybe halfway up the line, and then the dull foul at the last second past Jeff Yore in the coaching box. 5 0 Corner Canyon, top of the third inning. Alexander Timlip and Ty Wilkinson here for game two of this best of three. Lehigh leads the series, a game to none, following their Mercy Roll win last night. This one is tapped weakly off the fist. Williams picks it up, wings it over to first, and throws it over the head of the first baseman. And that's going to allow the Number nine, number eight man, Drew Watcott to get over to first base, to second base rather. And so on the error by the third baseman, Cooper Williams, a runner now remains in scoring position and there's still one out. And mistake me if I'm wrong, that's the third error now on the Lehigh Pioneers. It is indeed. Two wide check throws on the starter, TJ Peterson, and then the errant throw there from Cooper Williams. Some untimely unfortunate errors for the Lehigh Pioneers who are trying their hardest to make this as manageable as they can as this is hacked foul back over the roof you do get the feeling that the delay did have an effect on these two teams as well I mean we are about what two hours almost behind schedule right now because of the rain we had a 90 minute rain delay and then we had another 20 minute rain delay slash hail delay earlier as this one hits off the screen. I feel like it definitely plays a factor into both teams because... It played a factor on us. Yeah. 
to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> they got us all punch drunk. Well, for Lehigh and Corner Canyon, I mean, Corner Canyon, you get time to breathe, but Lehigh's like, hey, we're trying to come into this game and we want to win. This one is hit towards second. Runner will move over to third as Williams will wing it over to first. And there's two out here as the runner advances over to third. So, Corner Canyon, big insurance run potentially in this game over at third base right now. And the Pioneers still hitless. Having been set down in order two innings in a row, they have still yet to have a base runner in this game. First pitch on the way from Trey Pavelka is outside the outer half of the plate there for ball one. Well, this could also be a big opportunity for Lehigh's defense, considering Corner Canyon has already put up runs in the first and second inning, as they're yet to do so with two outs. Check throw down to third, close play, but back in safely is the runner Watcock. Pitch was outside and low. There are two balls and no strikes on. The leadoff man in the order, Garrett Downing. Five nothing quarter canyon already here in this game. 2-0 pitch. High fly ball in the air center field. Yates waiting. Gets it. Inning over. So the Lehigh Pioneers get a allow a runner to get to third, but they do not score. Now they need to get some offense going. Corner Canyon putting on a clinic here in this early going. They lead five to nothing as we head to the bottom of inning number three. Welcome back everyone to UCCU Ballpark here on the campus of Utah Valley University in the heart of the valley here at Arum. Alexander Timlip and Ty Wilkinson joined by his a couple of guests. Well, we have a couple of people here in the booth with us, one of them being Josh Dodger, cameraman. And we also have Wilson Gustafson here in the booth with us as well, who I guess is our analytics expert or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I guess we could call it that. Wilson, what do you got for us? Well, one thing I've really noticed so far from uh, Lehigh has been some uncharacteristically sloppy defense. Um, and it's been all around. Usually they've been so tight this entire tournament, but they have three errors here for th through three innings. And this is the first time that Lehigh has had three errors in the baseball game since March 15th wow. against Juan Diego. So wow. extremely uncharacteristic from them and probably a huge contributing factor to why they're down 5 nothing right now. And so you talked to, and so bringing back Ty in here, Wilson just talked about it. I mean, it's been almost, what? It's been almost the whole season basically since Lehigh has had this many uncharacteristic defensive errors. And like we said, two wide check throws, Ty, and the error by Cooper Williams, untimely errors, and now here they are down 5 nothing. and mainly the contributing factor is those three errors. Yeah, and it's not the time you want to make those errors or mistakes either. Again, it's a championship series. I understand that the nerves are at the all-time high, but you kind of just have to... Oh, nice catch out there. What a play over there by Cash Conker at second. That liner hung up just long enough for him to come down with that sucker. That looked like it had right field earmarked all over it, but Conker jumped up and said, I don't think so. And seven up, seven down here for Andrew Nice to begin this game. That prevented the first base hit for the Lehigh Pioneers. And the first base runner of the ball game as well. That pitch is in at the knees for a strike to the first baseman, Tanner Heaps. Man, and Andrew Nice is just going to go straight back to dealing. I mean, you talk about a performance that Corner Canyon needed after yesterday. I mean, this is it right here. Well, there's stu still two batters to go to try to get through the entire lineup, but I mean, like you said, even the fact that they've gotten through these seven without having a hit or a base runner, for that matter, is just huge. Liner to right, and they are gonna get a base runner over at first. Ty, are you kidding me? Happened again, Are didn't you it? kidding me? <sighs> Good Man, grief. Might just have Wilson call the rest of the game at this point. <laughs> Not only that's the first base runner, that's the first base hit of the ball game. Congratulations. You are the... Jeez. Uh, I had a great I think you are, start. I think I you have officially start. surpassed Chris Collinsworth and John Madden in the same breath. Do you know how hard that is to do? 
I'm just gonna stay quiet. You know. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Take away my mic privileges. I know it's. I know. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just joking with you. Two balls and no strikes now, or one ball and no strikes now to Gavin Yates, the center fielder, first base runner of the ball game and the first hit of the ball game for the Lehigh Pioneers. As this one is down in the dirt, two balls and no strikes. Okay, Ty, let's circle this back and take it seriously now. Right. This is huge here for Lehigh to at least get some traffic against Andrew Nice here in this inning. Right. Well, we talked about last game that the bottom of the order for Lehigh is really paying a contributing factor into why this team has just been so dangerous all year long is because you take these guys like, once again, Tanner Heaps, Gavin Yates. And, I mean, we know Dawson Brown. He had that home run yesterday to put a really big dent into the scoreboard. So it's pretty much just the bottom of the order that has this opportunity going into the top soon. Three balls and a strike now. Taking all the way was the center fielder, Gavin Yates. Three one on the way. Fly ball foul. And the count goes three balls and two strikes now on the center fielder, Gavin Yates, as Andrew Nice tries to work around that one out single. Runner at first, one out. Three balls and two strikes to count on Gavin Yates, the center fielder. Ozzie Williams stands on deck. The payoff on the way. Chopper back to the pitcher. They'll go the short way for the force. And that will move the runner into scoring position. So that de facto goes down as a sacrifice, and there's two gone. And here comes Ozzie Williams to the plate. To be followed on deck by the dangerous Maze Madsen right behind him. As we're going to have a chat here between pitcher and catcher out on the mound. And Ty, you have to figure at this point, if, you can, if you're able to even get across one run at this inning against Andrew Dice, Lehigh's going to feel pretty good about themselves going to the top of the fourth. That's a huge confidence booster, at least in my opinion, if you get at least one, especially when that'll bridge that four-run gap lead, or sorry, five-run gap lead that Corner Kane has already put on the scoreboard. But Andrew Nice is not going to let him go easy. We've seen him be calm and collected. He's taking his time with his pitches. As you can see, that wind up as in his grasp and possibility that he's trying to get. First pitch on the way to Ozzie Williams. Down low in the dirt, ball one. Andrew Nice had set down the first seven that he faced and then the single by Tatter Heaps and then the subsequent sacrifice that moved the Heaps over to second. So this is not really a sacrifice, but I guess you could call it that. 1-0 pitch on the way. Lighter down the left field line, tailing foul. That one hits off the top of the padding of the fence of the bullpen over there and left. Actually, it looked like that might have bounced up into the, uh, the grass outcropping there in the corner, but it looks like it fell short of that. 1-1 one, one the count. And the pitch. Check throw back to second. It's going to get into center field. And Heaps is going to take off for third. And he is going to get there easily. And that's going to advance the runner 90 feet. That'll be an error on the pitcher, Andrew Nice. And so now Ozzie Williams with a ball and a strike in his favor. Now has a chance to bring the run in. And give Lehigh some much needed momentum. 1-1 one, one pitch. Tried to lay down the bunt. And pulled it back as that ball went high and inside over Ozzie Williams' head. Two balls and a strike. Big gap up the middle there in center field. This one is slashed the other way off the screen. And the count goes to two balls and two strikes now with two out. You got to think if you're Lehigh, you're tasting this opportunity right now. This is a really good run that you could get across especially with two outs, and Andrew Nice, you can tell he's going to be in for a long deal. Strike three over the inner half. They lead the runner on third. 
And we head now to the top of inning number four. Five, nothing, Corner Canyon. Halfway home to forcing a decisive game three. Welcome back to the heart of the valley here in Arm, Utah. Alexander Tua up alongside my broadcast partner, Ty Wilkinson. Before we go any further, we'd like to remind you that the Rewind Sports Network's coverage of the UHSAE 6A Championship Series is presented by our friends at UCCU. It's also presented by Igloo Outfitters, the coziest wearable sleeping bag that has you covered through all seasons of the year. When you use the promo code Rewind, you can get 20% off your next order from Igloo Outfitters. Just go to IGLUoutfitters.com for more. 2-3-4 here to lead off for Corner Canyon. In the top half of inning number four as Trey Pavelka now into his second full inning of work here. First pitch on the way is at the knees on the outer half for a strike. There's that difficult pitch that I'm talking about. It's just those outside corners that you can hit on the opposite batter. 0-1 pitch. This one is left up high. Ball one. You feel the temperature starting to drop a little bit. There is some rain forming to the north and south of us, but it certainly hasn't affected where we are just yet as that's poured in at the knees on the off-speeder for a strike. Something to definitely keep an eye on as we go throughout this game, the weather conditions. What's you on the way? High fly ball in the air to right. Second baseman Williams is over. Brown calls him off. And Dawson Brown says that's mine. Williams says okay. And there's one out. No, he didn't. That'll break up the second baseman, Cash Conker now as the... Chargers look to build on this 5-0 lead. We're almost halfway home here in game number two. Lehigh leads the series one game to none. That one is an off-speeder left up high there for ball one. Two, three, four will also lead off the bottom of the fourth for the Pioneers as that's a fair ball ripped down the line. Past the diving Williams. Conker thought about going to second, but it said was caught halfway between the base bats, but has to run back in. I think he was just shocked with how quickly the left fielder, Draculic, picked it up out of the corner and gunned it back in, but it's a one-out single nevertheless. That's a veteran play out there in left field to get the ball. I mean, keeping a runner at first base on a ball that's directly down the third base line, that is a difficulty in and of itself for fielders. That brings up Nathan Horseman now, the dangerous third baseman as Manukin had that one go through him, but he was able to block it sufficiently. Third hit of the day for the Quarter Canyon Chargers. Both base hits came in the second inning. The home run by Ryland Dunn and the two-run single by the man at the plate here, Nathan Horseman. 1-0 pitch. Strike one. If there is a game three, it'll be 30 minutes approximately following this game because the 5A championship was decided in two games. Maple Mountain won both games. And they were both amazing games, amazing, thrilling, wild games, to say the least, as this one is golfed out of play out of the concourse towards Clyde Field on the other side of the complex. One and two the count here on Nathan Horstman, the third baseman. Andrew Nice, the pitcher, stands on deck. One, two pitch. Just missed the black. Two and two. Looks like Manukin had to snatch that back up to his left a couple of inches. So didn't get the call. Well, just a reminder in the lot. second inning, this was the spot Horseman was in on the 2 2. This one bounces up to the plate now on the catcher Manukin, and now the count goes to three balls and two strikes here. Nobody in the bullpen right now for the Lehigh Pioneers. That guy at the plate has had some great at-bats just in the postseason. 3-2 pitch. Foul. Sixth pitch of the A-B coming up here. 
Pavelka battled through a nine pitch AB to get the strikeout on Jack Munson now trying to battle through another long at bat here against the third baseman Nathan Horseman who's already got a two run single to his credit earlier today 3-2 ground ball base set to the left side right through the gap that'll move the runner up to second base Crow cuts back in quickly and their runners at first and second with still only one out Now, now up comes Andrew Nice, the pitcher. And if you notice, folks, uh, Ty, a couple of times during this during this series, Andrew Nice and Jacob Trost, the pitchers, were caught uh, giving the business earlier to the the Lehigh bench. And that's something to keep an eye on. The chirping has been going on between these two teams here throughout this entire series thus far. It's championship baseball. I mean, what more can you say to it? Nerves and tensions are at the all-time high. And if you want to let the other dugout know, I mean, obviously Jacob Trost paid for it yesterday. Well, obviously. <laughs> gave up eight runs in the subsequent bottom of the... Gave, gave up, was charged with the first of the eight runs in the bottom of the third, but... Andrew Nice has the right to do that right now, I think. And you just love to see the competitive juices flowing through these two teams. It's a good nature to have and mentality to Absolutely, have, too. Absolutely, I think. I mean, you don't have sports without that. I mean, come right. on now. <laughs> it's the passion. Yeah. Anyway, here's the 0-1 pitch following the hack. That one's picked up off the rug. Ball is strike. Well, you remember, Alex, we talked about Corner Canyon really needs to work in the count. How about Nathan Horseman? I mean, you go 2-2. You get that base knock, scores two runs, and then he goes up 3-2, and he gets that single right through that difficulty line. And a couple of those star-studded infielders out there, Mays Madsen, and then, of course, let me find who's over there at third, Alex. That, That's Cooper there he is. Williams. That's Cooper Williams. Yeah, star-studded infield. This one has hit the air right. Down the line, and it is a sliding stretch pitch over there by Brown. Runner will tie and go to third. As it was a robbery of sure extra bases over there by the right fielder Dawson Brown who had the final out of last night's game. The two run home run in the bottom of the third. And Ty, you talk about defensive plays. We have seen some good defense on both sides of this of this diamond here today. And how about that outfield catch? I mean that was tracing right down the foul line. It would go to the wall. And I would even argue that that would have scored a couple of runs too. So now here comes Ryland Dunn, who already has a home run. Struck out his last time. First pitch on the way is a high cheddar offer and a no dice on that one. Strike one. Runners at the corners, two out. As the Chargers look to extend this 5-0 lead here. Trying to force a decisive game three later on this afternoon. As that pitch goes in and hits Ryland Dunn. And the bases for the third consecutive inning are full of Chargers. As up to the plate steps Jack Munson, the right fielder. First pitch on the way from Pavelka. Is another high cheddar and another miss. A one pitch, ground ball to second. Williams goes the short way to Madsen for the force. And they'll get the out as Ryland Dunn cuts off his slide just in the nick of time. And that's the end of the inning. Chargers lead the bases loaded. We head now to the bottom of the fourth inning. It remains five nothing in favor of Corner Canyon. Thank you Mountainland Truck Outfitters for your sponsorship of KSL Sports Rewind's coverage of high school sports all school year long on this, the final day for the school year of KSL Sports Rewind on Championship Saturday. Alexander Timup alongside Ty Wilkinson here at UCCU Ballpark in Orem, Utah as the rain starts to start drizzling again here at UCCU Ballpark. 
So Ty, the big story right now, Corner Canyon up five to nothing, but it could be a lot more because they have left a ton of opportunities on base. As you just pointed out, second time they have left the bases loaded uh, in their innings today. Well, yeah, I mean, the score does obviously say five to nothing, but I feel like that last inning, which was the top of the fourth, is one that if you're Corner Canyon, you would want to have back, at least in my opinion. I could easily be wrong, but every insurance run is going to count, especially when you're facing against this really star-studded team like the Lehigh Pioneers. 2-3-4 in the order for the Lehigh Pioneers. It starts with their main man, Mays Matson. Can he get something going? 6 for 13 in this tournament. This one is lined to right and a base hit. Down the line it goes. Matson's going to try to leg out a double. This throw is going to be close and they're going to not get him. And then a shove on Ryder Florence at, third, at second base. And now, Ty, this is where you want to be careful. Emotions are running high on both sides. Eric Madsen's coming over to make sure no more funny business happens. Ty, we talked about it when emotions run high. Same thing happened against Mountain Ridge for Corner Canyon as now we're going to have a conference of the umpires here. And I think this is a good move here by the umpires led by home plate umpire Tracy Polson and crew chief Jason Estridge. Well, you see Madsen. This is, really, this is a really, really good move by these three to get their heads together and, and basically tell the benches, hey, that's enough. Well, I see. You see you're talking to... Or Madsen over there is right now talking to, uh, let's see, yeah, Ryder Florence just about that push, obviously. Yeah, I'm assuming it's going to be at least a little bit unintentional. We know Mays isn't exactly the guy to do it, but as you mentioned, when emotions run to the all-time high, I think it was just a slide that kind of just came in on an interesting situation. But So the call stands. Jason Estrich, the crew chief, says that Madsen is safe, but... Like you said, more than anything, that probably was the umpires coming together and telling the benches and telling each other that that's enough. We know emotions can run high, but sometimes things like that can happen, and that's where you have to channel that emotion in different ways. First pitch on the way coming to Boston Draculich is in low ball one. Draculich, Yabara, Manukin. And we're gonna have time called here as looks like uh, second baseman Cash Conquer out there is uh, seeing something in that uh, alignment out there. Probably smelling a a steal attempt by Mays Madsen. For Madsen, that's his seventh hit of this tournament. And his third extra base hit. He had two triples and a double now to that name today. Does that make him 7 of 13? 7 of 14, term? actually. 7 of 14, that's right. 1-0 pitch. In low again, but this time catches the inside part of the plate for a strike. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Kolya Barra, the DH, stands now on deck. After Boston Draculich. Here's the 1-1. High fly ball in the air to right. Coming over is the right fielder Munson. Makes the catch. Uh, Batson, meanwhile, behind the play tags and goes to third. And there's now one out. And a runner on third here for the Lehigh Pioneers, who are just really looking to check in with the run here at this point to get themselves some momentum going into the top of the fifth. As Corner Canyon trying to force a third game in the 6A championship series. Koyi Barra now stands in at the plate. He, the engineer, that two-run single that sealed the game against Riverton on Tuesday. That one just misses the outside part of the plate as it looked like Cotterall, the catcher, had to snatch it back a couple of inches to his left. It's a tough one for Hiabara to lay off, too, especially when you got a runner at third. Just a sack fly will do here. 1-0 pitch. 
is hit in the air right. And that is tailing foul over towards the bullpen, over the tractor, over maybe a couple of other things, maybe into a drainage ditch or somewhere. I don't know. All we know, that ball is far gone. As long as it's not into someone's nachos. Right. As long as it's not into the road back there, then that would be really dangerous. 1-1 one, one pitch. Ground ball to third and foul. As Madsen <laughs> picks it up barehanded. <laughs> and has a bit of a word with uh, Nathan Horseman. Horseman's like, that's my job. <laughs> One two pitch on the way. And that's in the carpet. Count goes to two and two. Two two pitch on the way. Into center field. That is going to be caught. But that is going to be more than deep enough to score the run. As Matza does come in to score. There's two out, and Lehigh's finally on the board. And Ty, we talked about how big those opportunities were. That's a big one right there for Lehigh to get that run. It's a good capitalizer right now, and the rain is going to start to pick up here too. Yeah, it is starting to rain again as this ball is outside ball one, and now everyone here at UCCU Ballpark that was up in the open is now for the... What, sixth or seventh time today, ducking and running for cover. This one is golfed in the air to right, falling fast down the line, and it's gonna drop! That's gonna be big time trip! That's gonna be big time trouble! Manukin's gonna motor his way in a second, and he will get there with a stand-up two-out double. Cade Bailey will now take his place out at second base as he hears the familiar chance of Nuke going back to the dugout. So now here is Cooper Williams, the third baseman. And Ty, if Lehigh gets this run across, they're right back in this game. First pitch coming from Andrew Nice. Strike right down the middle. One run already home on the RBI sack fly by Cole Yabara, and then Brandon Manukin with that two out double and then Cooper Williams now with a chance to get Cade Bailey, his pinch runner in from, first, from second base in a two out game. One strike pitch, foul. Count goes to two strikes. Well, so now Andrew Nice already looking for his second strikeout. It's been all defense, Alex. I mean, Corner Canyon, their defensive structure and their outfield as well as their infield has really been the reason why the score is the way it is. Here comes the rain again, picking up just a little bit now. Runner going to third. Don't know if anybody saw it. Boy, Kate Bailey just took off and no one moved a muscle for Quarter Canyon. I mean, he just... He tiptoed in I mean, ways he, over he, there. <laughs> I mean, he literally could have walked there if he wanted to. That's unheard of. Anyway, here's the one-two. And this one is tapped weakly foul off the batter's box up the line. I mean, what secret agency do you work for? <laughs> Goodness. I'm, I'm telling you what. I mean, Kate Bailey, I mean, he almost took off like he was a ninja down that third baseline. I mean, he was just, I mean, he was gone before anyone could get a look at him. What two pitch. Foul. Look out. Fifth pitch of the A-B now coming up for Cooper Williams as some people are beginning to pull out their umbrellas here at UCCU Ballpark. Some are pulling out ponchos, others are trying to cover up themselves with blankets and towels and the like. One, two pitch. And another foul, this time to the backstop. So the sixth pitch of the AD coming up here. 
Well, like I mentioned, Andrew Nice is still looking for his third strikeout. And he's stayed ahead of this count pretty much ever since this at-bat started. The one-two on the way. And again, another foul. Same spot off the end of the bat. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up here now for Cooper Williams. With Dawson Brown, the right fielder, standing on deck behind him. Well, this is where fire meets fire. A guy who wants the end of the inning versus one who wants to continue. And that guy wins. The third strikeout for Andrew Nice, but Lehigh does score in the bottom of the fourth inning. And the Pioneers have a little bit of a pulse now as we head to the top half of inning number five. Five to one, Corner Canyon, as the Chargers try to force a, fifth, a third game in the series. Well, as the rain picks up again here at UCC Ballpark, welcome back, Alex Eric's up alongside my broadcast partner, Ty Wilkinson. Let's get a look at some of the kids playing out there on the grass outcropping in left field. Already had one home run ball come their way today, had one come their way yesterday. And now, Ty, as we look through this uh, little bit of a rain shower here at UCCU Ballpark, we saw it have an effect on the pitching earlier this morning in the first game of the day between Maple Mountain and Brighton. How much do you think it's going to have an impact here as we head to the bottom of the fit, uh, top of the fifth? Roughly the same amount. I mean, for a pitcher, you're going to see him constantly try wiping off his hand on those white pants out there. But still, I think, once again, if you're a pitcher, you kind of just have to keep the ball at least as dry as possible. We you know it's a lot more difficult to get a rougher handle on it. Here's a bunt to third, and Cooper Williams comes in, scoops it, and gets the stab and the strike. As Drew Wapcott tried to bunt his way on on the first pitch, but Cooper Williams was having none of it as the rain now. Well, I will say, it, it, at Les Mercabi Stadium at home, we play through this kind of weather. Mm -hmm. This is what we call a little bit of a passing shower at back home of the 50th state as this one is on the outer half for a strike. Oh, well, it's funny because there's blue skies on the horizon. Yeah, there's blue sky right out to the right side of us. That's what's weird about it. All one pitch. High ball one. Take a look at the radar right now from the National Weather Service. There is a cell coming by us. It looks a little bit heavy, so to speak. This one is hitting the air to left. That's going towards the left field grass outcropping. Kids better look out over there. As the dive bombing run comes in. One, two on the way. And that's going the same direction. That's actually heading towards the Dippin' Dots ice cream truck back there, and it bounces just past it. That she might have landed in the Kona ice truck. Someone over there is like, I didn't order baseball with this. <laughs> oh, as they're trying to pick their way out of the ice. One ball, two strikes in the pitch. This one is lined to second. And just over the glove of Williams for a base hit. That would have been his second spectacular defensive play of the day. Instead, it's the fifth base hit of the afternoon. And the Corner Canyon Chargers have their first base runner since the third inning. Back on base here and one out. That'll bring up the leadoff man in the order, Garrett Downing, as the rain now. It's pretty, pretty good, pretty good shower, but it's not heavy enough that it's not unplayable yet, as that one's up high for ball one. It's not that it's unplayable, but it definitely affects the game. No, it affects the game for sure. I mean... You can see the rain starting to leave little puddles out there in the turf where the players are walking. Ball two here outside. Well, people probably don't realize this, but if you're playing outfield whenever it rains, it actually kind of affects the, your visibility, at least directly off the bat, especially looking into the overcast clouds right above you. And then not to mention you're looking up also into the rain at this point as well. Here's the 2-0 pitch. That one... Thought that might have hit Garrett Downing, but Downing got out of the way of it, and it's ball three. Runner on first, one out here in the top half of inning number five. From UCCU Ballpark. Chargers trying to force a third game in this series, a winner-take-all game. Later on today, as this one is down low again, ball four. Ball four. 
So a four-pitch walk issued to Garrett Downing, and now here comes Ryder Florence again. As the Chargers threatening once again to put more on the scoreboard. Well, you talk about another guy, Alex, that waits for his pitches. He had those back-to-back -back walks in the first and second inning on full count, too. one -oh pitch. Foul. Again, if there is a game three, it'll be approximately 30 minutes following the conclusion of this game here. Well, one, one pitch. This one is hit in the air to left, going towards the left field line. Draculich shades over a couple of feet, makes the catch. We'll hold the runners at first and second. Throw back in quick. And there's two out here now in the bottom or the top half of any number five as the rain continues to fall here at UCCU Ballpark. Again, it has been raining virtually all day outside of a couple of hours. Outside of maybe from about 12 to about 3 or 4 o'clock, it was nice. This has popped up sky high. Williams looks up, makes the squeeze, and that ends the inning. Porter Kenny gets two runners on base, but they can't do anything else with it. And now the Chargers need to play some defense as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. They still hold a four-run lead over Lehigh. Ball one down low to... Dawson Brown as we begin the bottom half of the fifth inning here of UCCU Ballpark. Alexander Smith alongside Ty Wilkinson in the heart of the valley here at RM Utah. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way from Andrew Nice is up high. Two balls and a strike and tie now. This is where things are going to get a little bit hairy here for Andrew Nice because he's got to work very carefully because as we said, Lehigh could strike in an instant. Well, not only does he have to work carefully, but now he has to factor into the rain being an option. This one's hit in the air to center. Downing comes back on it a few steps and makes the catch. I mean, just look at that rain right now through our screen. I mean, that is some... I mean, that's a, that's a shower and a half right now that these players are taking right now yep. out there in, in the outfield. We'll see if Andrew Nice decides to bring out a bar of soap in this uh, situation. They may need it. They may need it after uh, this game because there may be a game three. As now Tanner Heaps comes up to the plate. First pitch on the way to him is high and away ball one. Again, we were in a rain delay for about 90 minutes this afternoon of the first game, and then the uh, then we had a little bit of a hail slash rain delay for about 20 minutes after that, as this one was snatched back off the corner a couple of inches for ball two. Two zero pitch, mm, just a little bit low. Three zero. Three zero pitch, strike one. Taking all the way. One run, three hits, three errors for the Pioneers here thus far. Chargers have five runs on five hits with one error. Three one on the way. This one is high and inside, ball four. And we'll have a one-out base runner here for the Lehigh Pioneers. That's the fourth walk issued by Andrew Nice today against two strikeouts. And up steps the center fielder now, Gavin Heaps. Gavin Yates, excuse me. He followed in the on-deck circle by Ozzie Williams. Tying run now in the hole for the Lehigh Pioneers. First pitch on the way is fouled off the inside of the leg of Yates. Well, if you're Lehigh, you really want to get Yates on base right now because then you got your 1-2-3 order coming up next. It would be nice to do a little bit of damage early on the base paths. Well, one pitch, there goes the runner. And that's going to get by the catcher as we try to go for the quick pitch out. And now that runner does move into scoring position. 
with one out. One out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. One one pitch on the way. Ball two. Two one on the way. He is chopped to the pitcher. They'll let the rudder go to third. Throw over to third as they get the force at first. And that will create a runner at third base now with two out here. For the leadoff man, Ozzie Williams. To be followed in the order by Mays Matson, who had the big base knock earlier that put Lehigh on the board. We talked about how Lehigh is a deadly team. They had two comeback wins in the tournament. One against American Fork, one of the semifinals against Riverton. And time is called here by Ozzie Williams. Well, this is good news too, though, for Lehigh's offense because this is the second back-to-back -back inning. They've had a guy on third. They capitalized on the opportunity last time by that Brandon Manukin, or sorry, that by that Cole Yabara force out out there in center, which is as good as a sacrifice. 1-0 pitch on the way, and Williams swung at that one in the dirt. Trying to go down and get that one off the turf. The only issue is now Lehigh has two outs instead of one, so the sack fly is not in contention. 101 the count, two out. Ozzie Williams in the batter's box, Mays Madsen on deck, 1-1 one, one pitch. Down low in the dirt, goes to two balls and a strike. Two one pitch. Ball three. Three one pitch. Ball four. And there are runners at the corners now with two out. And here comes Matson to the plate. Already one for two today. Madsen now represents the fourth run in the order now. And the tying run is now on deck in the person of Boston Draculich. Mays Madsen started the rally. Can he continue it right here? I love as soon as he steps up to the batter's box, the rain starts to fall. And that is a very good sign in my opinion. Is that a sign of things to come? First pitch on the way, high ball one. As we're, Adrian Nice asks for a different game ball, as that one looked like it slipped out of his hand, and now you see the rain started having an effect. This is a clutch moment for the captain. It's a good opportunity too, runners up the corners. 1-0 pitch, down to the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. And it looks like we're going to have the field cleared. Yeah, it's it's coming down now. Yeah, a good reason to. I mean, this. I mean, it's coming down pretty good now, Ty. Oh, Andrew Nice gets lucky. That was 2-0, and I felt Madsen was starting to get some electricity coming soon. So once again, for the third time today, we are in a rain delay and a good time for it too as it is pouring now here at UCCU Ballpark. We'll be back as soon as we can on the Rewind Sports Network. It's five to one with the Lehigh Pioneers threatening to make it interesting. Well, if you look out to our left right now, we have a, what Ty Wilkinson calls a I think what we're calling a quadruple rainbow. Welcome back, everyone, to the Rewind Sports Network's coverage 
of the UHSAA 6A Baseball Championship Series Game 2 here from UCCU Ballpark. Ty, well, uh, I, I, I don't want to I don't want to say anything because uh, because I might get uh, roasted for it on the air, but seeing that rainbow in that form over the Lehigh dugout side right now is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> I, w I would say the same thing. It's directly over, like the access point of that rainbow is directly over that bullpen. <laughs> and that's a bright rainbow too, holy cow. It's beautiful. Okay. Well, do you feel like you're in your home state, Alex? Okay, well, any, okay, well anyway, <laughs> let's direct our attention back from the rainbow because now here comes Mace Matson tie out of the weather delay. And this is a big spot for this team because you got the tying run on deck here if you're Lehigh, and you've got to be smart here with a 2-0 count. So here we go. Back to baseball we go. And the first pitch is in there for a strike as we're back underway with baseball here at UCCU Ballpark. Again, if Corner Canyon wins this game, we'll have a game three. Coming up in about 30 minutes after this game is over. 2-1 pitch, check throw over to first. And now the runner coming to the plate, and he is safe in the plate. Runner going to second, throw down. He's going to bounce into center field. And that means the tying run is on deck now. And the potential go-ahead run is now in the hole here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Runner on second now with two out and now we got time called here by Mays Madsen. Two one pitch, ball three. <laughs> three one on the way. Ball four. Throw down to third. They are not going to get him. Runners at the corners again. And here comes the tying run. At the point, number nine, Boston, this game just got a whole lot more interesting. It started with a 2-0 count out of this weather delay. And now, the tying run is at the plate. Mays Matson going for second. They will not get him. And now he has a word with Conker out there at second base. Well, didn't I say earlier in the broadcast, Alex, that Lehigh needed to be super smart on their base running? I mean, how many steals could you count this inning? That pitch is down low and in, ball one. Again, the tying run is at the plate. Potential go-ahead run is on deck. Bottom of the fifth inning, 5-2 Corner Canyon. Are the fireworks about to start again here at UCCU Ballpark? 1-1 one, one pitch. Foul. We just had the feeling something like this was coming from Lehigh at some point during this game. This is a big at-bat, too. Behind in the count, runners on third and second. Knocking on the door of doing more damage. Nice will step off the mound. Actually, he's going to call for a meeting here. Don't think he liked what he saw on the read on the pitches. Against the backdrop of a rainbow on the field here at UCCU Ballpark. 
a 5-2 game here in game two of this 5A championship, of the 6A championship series. Runners on second and third, one, two, and two out. The one-two pitch. Chopper right back to the pitcher. And this inning is over. The Lehigh Pioneers scratch across another run. They still trail by three as we head to this, the top of the sixth in game two. Welcome back to UCCU Ballpark as the sun starts to peek out here at the ballpark. Alexander to up alongside Ty Wilkinson here inside the broadcast booth. Reminder, at the end of today's game, Ty and I will be selecting our choice for the Heidemann and Associates player of the game. The player that went above and beyond the call of duty, just like how Heidemann and Associates does the same for you, the client. Call and tap to today at 801-472-7742 or at 801-754-4240 or contact them online at utah.law. We have a new pitcher on the mound. It's Caleb Crutchfield, the 6'3 left-hander. And Ty, right now, you and Wilson were just talking about it right behind me. Just for Lehigh, even to get one run in the bottom of the fifth inning was huge for them. It's true. I mean, little by little, content approach by content approach, I was showing you the scorecard, Alex, because first inning, they started off with all zeros, no runs, no hits, and zero left on base. Same thing. A 1-2-3 inning for Andrew Nice. Then they started to pick up at least a little bit of speed in the third inning. They got one hit, but then obviously in the fourth, they did some damage, one run, and then in the fifth, one run. So it's the small and content approach, but it's a sneaky one too because they stranded two runners on second and third, which a single would have, like Wilson said, could have changed the game in a heartbeat. So now it's up to Crutchfield to try to keep this deficit right where it is for the bottom of the sixth inning here as the Chargers try to regain some of the momentum they lost from not only that from not only that fourth and fifth inning time, but also from I think from that rain delay as well, because we were in a delay for well over 23 minutes. Right. I know it's I know it's been raining, Alex, but uh, Corey Canyon is in a run drought right now. They haven't scored ever since the second inning, but that's still holding to be their strong suit right now. I mean, being up three runs against a really physical and, you know, detrimental Lehigh team in the offensive perspective. This one is hitting the air to the right side. That one just misses the roof out there on the right field side for strike one. Again, if Corner Canyon wins, we'll have a game three. 30 minutes after this game ends, 0-1 pitch from Crutchfield is high and away, ball one. Nathan Horseman, the two-run single that really proved to be the difference so far in this 5-2 ball game. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. One, two. Goodbye. First strikeout of the first batter face for Caleb Crutchfield. Just the third one of the day, though, for the Lehigh pitching staff. And now here comes the starting pitcher, Andrew Nice, now to the plate, who, I mean, you would think at this point is definitely going to go to the sixth inning. Maybe he'll try to go for the seventh. What a masterful job he's done today as... Andrew Nice gets clipped with that pitch from Caleb Crutchfield, and he goes down to first base. And again, Ty, it's the it's the little bit of gamesmanship right there, Ty. You have to say that that has been coming for quite a while because of all the, the chirping that's been going on between the two dugouts. Right, that's a combined fifth hit by pitch that Corner Canyon has received from this Lehigh pitching staff, at least on the margin thus far. Lincoln Yor now goes out to pinch run over at first base for the pitcher, Andrew Nice. So that kind of tells you the strategy that Jeff Yor is thinking about is that they're going to bring Andrew Nice in at least for the first two-thirds of the sixth inning and see if they can't get somebody in the bullpen to back him up after that. 1-0 pitch is right in at the corner for a strike. Well, Eric Madsen, as we know, can put a lot of trust in his pitching staff, especially in his bullpen opportunities. On one pitch on the way. 
Swing and a miss, strike two. Minder Lehigh has not lost a game in this 6-8 tournament all week long. They have won 10 consecutive games, but Corner Canyon is threatening to snap that streak and force a decisive winner-take-all game tonight. 1-2 pitch. That one just missed the black. Maybe had to snatch it back a few inches to the left. One, two pitch. That one looked like it fouled off of Dunn and then it caught off the knee of the catcher, Brandon Manukin. And I know he's wearing padding down to that knee, but sometimes it doesn't really do much to protect your kneecap down there. Yeah. Now Eric Madsen's going to come out and have a chat with Manukin, make sure he's okay. First year head coach Eric Madsen trying to bring home the second championship trophy in the three major sports for Lehigh this year. You should say you should say first year for Lehigh. <laughs> yes, Quincy Lewis, Quincy Lewis and Cooper Lewis did it. Father-son duo for the basketball team and now Mays and Eric trying to do the same for the baseball team. 2-2 pitch. Set out. Two strikeouts around a hit batsman for Caleb Crutchfield. There's two away. And now here comes Jack Munson to the plate. Four, five, six in the order will be leading off the bottom of the sixth inning for the Lehigh Pioneers. That pitch is lined to left and a base hit. Munson does come through with a two-out knock on the end of his bat. And there are runners at first and second now here at the top of the sixth with two out. And that'll bring the left fielder, Drew Watcott, now to the plate. And Ty, that's a big insurance run standing out there at second base. It really is to go up at least four runs. I told you, or at least I think we talked about, I forget what game it was, but the difference between being down four from being down three and the mentality that you have as ball players. There's a liner into center field, but it is caught on the run by Ozzie Williams. And on one pitch, the inning is over. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Heart of the order coming up. The heart rates are rising. Will there be a game three? Or will the Pioneers do it again and come back to win the championship? We'll be back on the Rewind Sports Network after this message from Eddie Hour Services. Well, look at that blue sky here that Vince Francis is showing the viewers at home here at UCCU Ballpark looking out towards the... The University Parkway and the junction that leads to the I-15 freeway. Alexander Tsumup alongside my broadcast partner, Ty Wilkinson. We get set for the final half of the sixth inning here. And Ty, you were just pointing something out to me on your scorecard. Corner Canyon, I mean, they're up 5-2 to two right now, but you got to think, they should be up a lot more if it wasn't for leaving a lot of runners on base. True, they've left 12 total, at least on base, not to mention that in the second and fourth inning, they stranded the bases loaded at one point. We remember that that great second inning where they put up a four spot on the Lehigh Pioneers, but you wonder if that's going to play a factor into this later inning for a team that is known for having outstanding offense in this particular inning. We pointed out again, Corner Kent, or rather Lehigh put up four runs in the top of the sixth inning against American Fort. They put up four in the top of the seventh against the Riverton Silverwolves in that elimination game, and so in a three-run game. We said it, folks. We might just be getting started with the fireworks here at UCCU Ballpark here in game two. 2-0 -oh pitch to Cole Ball uh, looked like it was a ball three, but it's called a strike instead. Probably a makeup for the one they missed a little bit earlier. Two one pitch on the way. This one is foul. Yabara, Manukin, Cooper Williams, the three to be leading off here for the Pioneers here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Down three runs. Two two pitch on the way. Come on. And for the first time since I believe it was the third or fourth inning, Andrew Nice finally has a strikeout. 
His third one of the day gets four walks. And here comes Nuke. First pitch on the way. And he swings and misses at that one. Well, Alex, that last strikeout was huge, and let me tell you why. Cole Yabara, if you can remember dating, I shouldn't say dating back to, but that Lehigh versus American Fort game. I'll let this ground out. Throw over to first is in time, and two up, two down here for Andrew Nice here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. And so the reason that's such a huge out, you remember Cole Yabara, he got that outstanding RBI. It was, I believe it was to tie the game, correct? Was yep. it to tie? Because they, they well, were Manuka down. Manuka tied the game on Tuesday. It was Yabara who basically won the game on Wednesday. Right. But he had that huge base knock. So did Manukin, by the way, in that American Fort game. At least that's what I was trying to refer to, for that matter. <laughs> Cooper Williams now stands into the plate. Two out here in the bottom half of the sixth. Oh, one pitch on the way. That one had to be snatched back a couple of inches there off the right-hand side. Ball one. Ball one pitch. Ground ball to short again. Picked up by Florence. Gunned over to first. And Andrew Nice has set down the side again. Ikahi and Lua Aloha go the Pioneers. Now the Chargers need to get some offense going. They haven't scored since the second inning. They could use an insurance run. We head to the last inning of regulation play. Corner Canyon in the driver's seat. Up 5-2. Josh Dodge temporarily taking over on the camera for us here. As Vince Francis takes a quick little break. Want to go back to UCC Ballpark on the campus of Utah Valley University. The UHSAA Baseball Championship Series will continue on KSL Sports Rewind. If this scoreline holds, folks, in 30 more minutes after this game ends, we will have a winner-take-all Game 3 between the Corner Canyon Chargers and the Lehigh Pioneers. Stay tuned for all of that action. Still got a long way to go, but if Corner Canyon wins, stay tuned for Game 3 coming up at approximately, we'll say about maybe 6.45 or 7 o'clock here on the Rewind Sports Network. Alexander Tewup alongside my broadcast partner Ty Wilkinson and you talk about an inning Lehigh needs to have defensively down three runs. This is it right here. It definitely is, especially against the guys that he's going to have to be facing, at least coming up here shortly. So pinch hitter coming up here, replacing Tanner Mackey, Logan Nordhoff will lead off the bottom half or top half of the, six, of the seventh. It's Caleb Crutchfield and he takes strike one over the outer half of the plate. Porter Canyon hasn't scored since putting up that four spot in the top half of the second inning, but since then their defense and their pitching have been excellent, to say the least, as Nordhoff swings and misses and quickly goes down 0-2 here to Caleb Crutchfield. O2 pitch. Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to you, Logan Nordhoff, as he gets set down on three pitches, and now up to the plate steps the leadoff man, Garrett Downing. So lefty against lefty here for Caleb Crutchfield. Well, this is huge so far for Lehigh's bullpen. I mean, you take, take a look at all the zeros you see from the third to the sixth inning, now carrying over into the seventh. And I mean, that's what's keeping, you know, Lehigh realistically in the game, at least as the time goes right now. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, strike two. It'll be Brown, Heaps, and Yates, bottom of the order, coming up to the Lehigh Pioneers, and Yates will represent the tying run in the hole for the Lehigh Pioneers in the inning. 0-2 pitch on the way. That one misses the corner by about a hair. Ball one. As Manukin had to bring it back a couple of inches over the left side. One, two. That one tries to go back inside but misses low. Two 
2-2 pitch. And this one is hit off the glove foul of Brandon Manukin as that one looked like it was foul tipped into his glove, but he couldn't squeeze it. So the, uh, I believe the fifth pitch now of this A-B coming up here for Garrett Downing, who's looking to get on base and gives the Corner Canyon Chargers some important insurance out there. The run will go a long ways to giving Corner Canyon some confidence going into the bottom of the seventh inning. Especially with the firepower Lehigh has on all parts of the lineup. 2-2 pitch coming, the payoff on the way. See you later. Two up, two down for Caleb Crutchfield. And now that brings up the shortstop Ryder Florence, who's been spectacular today, Ty Wilkinson. Yeah, he definitely has. I mean, not only just defensively, but also offensively. I mean, I'm going to disregard his two flyouts that he's had in the previous innings, but the best player, I think, for Corner Canyon that he just decides to wait for what he likes. And if he likes it, he'll swing on it. So credit where it's due. When he likes his pitches, he'll get it in play, but he also likes to lay off the pitches that he doesn't like. Example A. He's been the most consistent player, I think, up and down the lineup for Corner Canyon, along with Nathan Horseman and Ryland Dunn, of course, has had his moments as well. But I think Ryder Florence definitely has developed into something special here for Corner Canyon in this 6A baseball tournament. Well, there's a reason why he wears the number on his back, but, you know... Getting that two slot is a super big deal for the Corner Canyons lineup. You kind of wonder if that's a reference to Troy Tulowitzki as we have catcher's interference called on Brandon Manukin, and that's going to put Ryder Florence on first base. That's just the second time we've seen catcher's interference called in this entire tournament, and there was no argument from Manukin, so got a little overzealous there, and now up steps Cash Conquer to the plate. Important insurance run for Corner Canyon out there at first base. As Ty said, big difference between a three-run game and a four-run game here, especially against a team that has as much firepower that Lehigh does. On all parts of the lineup, especially with Brown, Heaps, and Yates, the bottom of the order coming up. In the seventh inning for the Pioneers, trying to take home the championship. This one is hacked foul off to the right field side and out of play. Well, how about Lehigh once again? Their bullpen pitching coming through yet again at the fourth strikeout. Or there's four strikeouts in just two innings. Remember the two in the sixth, and now two in the seventh. Again, they're the ones that are keeping him in for the count right now, at least. So one and two the count now as Caleb Crutchfield has the Corner Canyon Chargers on their last offensive out of game two in regulation play. And Crutchfield set down the side and give his team a chance in the bottom of the seventh. The payoff pitch on the way, one and two. And that one is up high around the nose there, two balls and two strikes. Two, two on the way. Fly ball in the air to right. Tailing towards foul ground. Brown has got it. And the drama builds. Seven, eight, nine. Started by the man you see running off the field. Dawson Brown. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Lehigh is in last chance saloon. Down, 5-2. Well, here we go. There's the story of the game so far. Corner Canyon has basically been shut out since since the second inning they've only put up five runs they've been shut out in every inning since then alexander Tim up alongside my broadcast partner ty wilkinson and as andrew nice is back on the mound to try to go to the complete game win and ty you have to say i mean we talked about how corner canyon needed a response in this game they have gotten it and then some now can they close the deal well yeah and we t we said it at the beginning at least pregame wise, that Andrew Nice would not have to be nice to these Lehigh batters, and boy has he done so. Only allowed three hits for this for this dangerous, dangerous lineup. Like that stat in and of itself is super incredible to me. And I think the folks at home need to understand how difficult that is against this Lehigh lineup that is just so loaded and so heart driven. 
So here is Dawson Brown to lead off the bottom of the seventh inning and he takes ball one from Andrew Nice. Seven, eight, nine in the order for Lehigh here in the bottom of the seventh inning to try and force at least extra innings. Tying run is in the hole. 1-0 pitch. Ground ball to short. Florence scoops it up, throws to first, one out. Two outs away from a masterful performance by Andrew Nice. He only has three strikeouts on the day, but boy has his defense stepped up big when they needed to today. First pitch on the way. Had to snatch that back off the corner. Their ball one to the first baseman, Tatter Heaps. Andrew Nice is in line for the win. The loss will be charged to TJ Peterson. That one had to be picked up a little bit off the rug right there, off the black there, 2-0. The tying run is Ozzie Williams in the hole right now for the Lehigh Pioneers. 2-0 pitch. Line to right, foul. Could not have imagined Andrew Nice being thrust into the situation when he has responded with one of the biggest outings of his career. Two one pitch. Swing and a miss. Two two pitch. Foul. Two two payoff. Foul again. Sixth pitch of the A B coming up here for Tanner Heaps. Again, the tying run is in the hole with Ozzy Williams on deck following Gavin Yates, the center fielder. Well, in both plate appearances that Tanner Heaps has had, he's got on base, and he's not willing to give that up. 2-2 Two -two pitch, fouled again. And this is pitch number seven coming up here in the at-bat. There is an arm up in the bullpen right now. It's a right-hander for Corner Canyon. But the way Andrew Nice is pitching right now, I don't think Jeff Yore is going to move a single inch toward that bullpen. <coughs> Two two pitch. Full count. And now a pitch away from bringing the tying run on deck. Three balls, two strikes, and the pitch. Ball four. And the tying run will be brought to the on deck circle as here comes Gavin Yates. Ozzy Williams now stands on deck as the potential tying run and the potential championship winning run is in the hole now in the form of guess who? Mays Madsen. Can't script it any better than this, can you? First pitch on the way. Ball one, again. Again, there's a right-hander warming up in the bullpen for Corner Canyon. one -oh pitch, runner goes, throw down a second. Stolen base. Yes. 
Lehigh has scored single runs in the fourth and the fifth. Duo pitch. Strike one. Talked about it too earlier, Alex. The mental awareness on the base pass for Lehigh is what would keep them in it. And I mean, they've had plenty and plenty of stolen bases against Andrew Nice. 2 1 pitch. Foul. 2 and 2. Two-two pitch. Ball three. And now a pitch away for potentially bringing the tying run to the plate and the championship winning run to the on-deck circle. Three-two pitch on the way. Here it comes. No. Ball four. The drama builds. And Jeff Yore comes right out of that dugout. And I think that is gonna do it for his starter, Andrew Nice. Andrew Nice does his job. Here comes Lincoln Yore out of the bullpen. Can he get the final two outs? The drama builds. We will be right back. Lincoln Yore comes into the game at shortstop. Ryder Florence takes over at, at pitcher. Andrew Nice will still be responsible for the runners on first and second. The tying run now at the plate in the person of Ozzie Williams and Ty. We talked about this, Corner Canyon they nearly blew a 10-4 lead at the bottom of the seventh inning against the Mountain Ridge Sentinels. We asked the question, can they close the deal? It is once again now going to be up to their bullpen to get it done. It really will be. I mean, you put it into the arm of Ryder Florence, who has been a very, very productive asset in the wins that Corner Canyon has had this season. He's maintained a 112 ERA in the 10 appearances that he's had two wins on his resume and three saves. That's the key factor right there is the three saves. You just got to let the drama build at this point, Alex. Absolutely. The most runs that Quarter Canyon had given up before the game against Lehigh last night was eight runs against Mountain Ridge. And they finally closed the deal against the Lehigh Pioneers and force a winner take all game three. The tying run is at the plate. The potential championship winning run is on deck. First pitch on the way, ball one. Strike one. Rider in the air to left center. That is going to be caught out there by the center fielder Downing. Runners will tag and go to second and first, respectively. But there are now runners at the corners. There's two out, Ty. 
And the potential game tying run is now represented by Mays Madsen with the potential championship winning run represented by Boston Draculic. You can't script it any better than that, can you? You can't at all. And how about the three time player of the game this tournament coming to the at bat with the last out to save Lehigh? First pitch coming. Ball one. And they're working in very, very carefully here. One oh. Ball two. Doesn't get the call. I don't blame Florence for those outside pitchers either, Alex, especially against that dangerous hitter at the plate. Two-0 -oh pitch. Liner foul. Look out, first base coach. Whoa. That one came right by his feet. Boston Draculich now represents the championship winning run. First pitch on the way. Miner to third, to first. Game over. The series is tied. There will be a third game in this championship. So they will come to the center of the field now for the coin toss to determine who has home field in this game three. Jeff Clough, the Assistant exec of the UHSAA is currently out of the field. Lehigh is the home team. They will call the toss. Lehigh has won the toss. Which means they will be the home team in game three. And Ty Wilkinson we just knew this was going to happen. Lehigh and Quarter Canyon will now play a decisive game three in this series. I mean, you can't script it any better, can you? Lehigh has been handed their first loss in the tournament after 10 in a row. And now we head to a theoretical, what feels like would to be a game seven, even though it's game three. <laughs> So Ty, time to name our height of it, an associate's player of the game here at game two. I mean, Ty, you talk about a career-defining performance. Andrew Nice, six and a third innings. 
Six and a third innings. He, yes, he had four walks, but he had four big strikeouts. And Ty, you talk about the effort that this defense gave all game long. You could not have scripted this any better for the Corner Candy Chargers. You definitely couldn't. He allowed only three hits total, as well as two runs to corner to uh, sorry Lehigh. That stat in and of itself is just incredible. That is a career performance and one to be proud of at that. So Ty, Joe Buck always says there's the regular season, there's the postseason, and then there's game sevens. We are going to play a theoretical game seven coming up at seven o'clock p.m. What do you think the message is now for both teams heading into this winner take all championship game? It's go big or go home at this point, Alex, because there will be no game after this. There will be a decided winner. There will also be a decided loser. There is going to be no in-between. There is no other game happening after this. You just kind of have to tell your team, guys, everything that we've done this season, all of these mound visits, all of these coaching meetings that I've brought you in for, this is what the season's all about right here. It's the best words in baseball. Winner take all. The series is tied 1-1. We will have a game three. Get ready, folks. We'll be back at 6.50 for the tune-up and the start-up to what will be a game three for the ages.